Consider the reaction between 3-chloropropene and hydroxide. What's going to be the major product of that reaction? And also, what mechanism will it proceed by? Would you say SN1 or SN2? Now, what we have here is a special type of halide. This is known as an allylic halide. Allylic halides can work well with both SN1 and SN2 reactions. Now, this is a primary allylic halide. And let's say if we were to use water in addition to hydroxide, will it be an SN1 or SN2 reaction? Now, if we were to compare that with propyl chloride, if we were to use hydroxide, this would be an SN2 reaction because we have a primary alkyl halide and that favors SN2 reactions. Tertiary alkyl halides favor SN1. So this will give us an OH. The hydroxide will come from the back, expelling the chlorine. But now what if we were to use water with propyl chloride? Will it still be SN2 or will it be an SN1 reaction? In order for us to get the SN1 reaction, the leaving group has to leave. But the problem with this is primary carbocations are not stable. And so we don't get the SN1 reaction here. This is going to be the SN2 reaction. Water is going to attack from the back, kicking out the leaving group. We'll get an oxonium ion. And then another water molecule will have to come in and remove this hydrogen. In the end, we'll get the same product, but it's going to happen in two steps as opposed to one. Now, with the allylic halide, even though it's primary, the situation is slightly different. Now, this will still work for an SN2 reaction because you know we have a primary allylic halide and it's not hindered, so hydroxide will come from the back, attack the carbon, and expel the leaving group, giving us this product. Now, what about reacting the allylic halide with water? Hydroxide is a strong nucleophile, so it'll react quickly with the allylic halide. That's where we get the SN2 reaction. Water is a bit slower. Water is like a, it's neutral, so to speak. Hydroxide is a much better nucleophile than water. As a result, because water is slower than hydroxide, it's not as nucleophilic it's going to give this time to ionize. And so we're going to get the SN1 reaction. The leaving group is going to leave. And we have a primary carbocation, but the difference here is it's primary and it's allylic. The carbocation is stabilized by resonance. So water can approach any one of these carbocations, but we're going to get the same product though, whether you put the OH on this side or on that side, it'll still lead to the same product. But notice the difference between the two. So in propyl, with propyl chloride, it really didn't matter if we were to use hydroxide or water because this particular substrate works better for SN2 reactions and not for SN1 reactions. So it doesn't matter what type of nucleophile uh, we were to choose. Now when we when we started with an allylic halide as a substrate, the choice of our nucleophile did matter. Because this can work well for both SN2 and SN1 reactions, the nucleophile that we use will determine which one we're going to get. So if we were to use a strong nucleophile with an allylic halide, that will give us the SN2 reaction mechanism. If we were to use a weaker nucleophile, like water, we would get the SN1 reaction mechanism. Let's try another example, but instead of an allylic halide, we're going to consider a benzylic halide. 
Now, benzylic halides, they work well for SN2 and S1 reactions. Now, the only time they won't work well for an SN2 reaction is if this carbon is sterically hindered. But because it's primary, an SN2 reaction will work. If it was tertiary, then it would just be SN1. But all types of benzylic halides, if it's primary, secondary, or tertiary, can work for the SN1 reactions. For the SN2 reaction, it's not going to work well if it's tertiary. If it's primary or secondary, then the SN2 reaction can work. So we're going to react this with methoxide and methanol. In both cases, we'll get the same product, but what's the predominant mechanism in each situation? For the top one, methoxide is a strong nucleophile. And with a primary benzylic halide, we're going to get the SN2 mechanism. This is going to attack the carbon here, kicking out the leaving group. And so the end result is that we're going to get an ether. Here we have a weaker nucleophile. And so this is going to favor the SN1 reaction mechanism. The leaving group is going to leave. And we'll get a benzylic carbocation. Now, even though this carbocation is primary, it's stabilized by resonance. We can move that positive charge to three additional carbon atoms. So that positive charge is shared among four carbon atoms. In the next step, the methanol is going to react with the benzylic carbocation. So we'll have an oxygen with a methyl group and a hydrogen. It's going to have one lone pair and a positive charge. Now, in the final step, methanol is going to remove this hydrogen, and we're going to get the same product. So we'll get an ether in both cases since these two are fairly similar. But that's what you need to know. So allylic halides and benzylic halides, they can work well for both SN1 and SN2 reactions. So if you're using a weak nucleophile, chances are it's going to be an SN1 reaction. If you're using a strong nucleophile, it's going to be an SN2 reaction if you're dealing with a primary or a secondary allylic or benzylic halide. If it's a tertiary benzylic halide, then it's not going to favor the SN2 reaction. It's going to favor the SN1 reaction. But keep in mind, though, you could also get the E1 and the E2 reaction as well with these things. So here's another example. What product would you expect for this reaction? The only difference is we added an extra carbon. So here we have a secondary allylic halide. If we were to react it with water, water is a weak nucleophile. It's also a weak base. So we can get the SN1 reaction. And we can also get something else. We can also get the E1 reaction. When the leaving group leaves, we'll get a secondary allylic carbocation. But because of the extra carbon that we added, there's a hydrogen here. And that hydrogen is going to be relatively acidic. So water will act as a weak base, and it could form a pi bond here. So as a result, we'll get this E1 product. Now, this E1 product is special because notice that it's conjugated with the other double bond. And so conjugated alkanes are highly stable. So therefore, 
there's a good chance we'll also get the E1 uh, reaction as well. Now with this example, we have a strong base. Whenever you have a strong base and a secondary alcohol halide, that favors the E2 reaction more than the SN2 reaction. So this mechanism is predominantly going to be E2. Hydroxide is going to remove the hydrogen, form an alkene, kick out the leaving group. And the fact that we get a conjugated alkene increases the likelihood of the E2 reaction. So if this was a primary allylic halide with a strong base, that will favor the SN2 reaction. But if it's a secondary allylic halide, that will favor the E2 reaction if we have an available hydrogen to take off. In the other case, in the other example, we didn't have that hydrogen, so the E2 reaction wouldn't work. But for this one, it will work. And the fact that we get a stable conjugated diene increases the likelihood of us getting the E2 reaction for that example. So that's basically it for this video. So just to review, allylic and benzylic halides can work well for both SN1 and SN2 reactions. They can also work for E1 and E2 reactions, depending on if we have a proton that is available for abstraction, and also if we get conjugated alkenes. The formation of a conjugated alkene or diene will increase the likelihood of an elimination reaction.